Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. And Jay Klein connect here along with head coach Scott Langer, as usually, uh, or as usual. Uh, coach, uh, kind of a strange weekend with a uh, schedule change, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But a 4-3 loss Saturday night, a very exciting finish. Uh, two late goals, I think it was inside of a minute 11. To tie things up and go to overtime, you secure the point, uh, end up ultimately losing that one four to three, as I mentioned. But man, the crowd, I think there was 1876 that were reported and they were on their feet. That was a really exciting one. Um, what, what were your guys' thoughts on Friday night's matchup? It seemed like, you know, again, the possession game was on your side, the shots on goal were on your side, the chances, it, it really seemed like you guys were doing some some things right, like we've talked about. Yeah, it was, it was kind of an odd game, you know, because we, we, were, we were on them pretty good. Good. And um, they went down, and you know they scored the, the the way they scored. I mean, they were very opportune in the way. I think they had what two two goals on seven shots or yeah. something like that. So uh, you know, it's a little frustrating because you're you're peppering teams and you're you're trying to create ways to score, and you're not having that luck. But then we go back and we look over the last eight games, we've scored 22 goals. So we actually we are scoring, mm -hmm. you know. But it was good that our guys were persistent in that game and you know found a way to battle back the way they did and you know salvage a point we, you know we we had some we had a big opportunity to win the game in overtime with with Dubois and made a big mistake on the defending side and, and ultimately they won the game but um, you know that's just kind of how things are going right now we move on to Sunday afternoon a matinee here at the ODI Center a 6-3 loss um, a pretty close game again throughout you know you're out shooting them you're out chancing them it's three to one and then things kind of started to get blown open a little bit um but again some late goals there that added some excitement and, and so on sunday sunday's matchup where you kind of had the same thought as as saturday's or what were your what were you guys just uh, yeah, i think it was going the same way yeah. i mean it's uh you know, we, we, were, we were doing enough again, you know, their goaltender played really well, but you know, the difference in that game is we, we basically made it 3-2 and they called the goal off and um, a little frustrating when the goal's getting kicked off six times in two nights and that has to be managed. There's guys that are being paid to be out there to manage that and you know, you know, it's a whole different ball game if, if we get that goal and make it 3-2 because we were on top of them again. And um, But you know, there's no excuses. The outcome is what it is over the weekend. It's not good. Nobody's happy in the locker room. No one's happy at all. So uh, I guess again, we're, we're back to going back to work and, and trying to fix what we can. Well, and two goals over the course of the weekend, actually, that were uh, disallowed. Um, one was a high stick over the crossbar. The other was, uh, again, a goal off the mooring. Uh, power play went three of nine. This is a uh, one of four, you know, 25 percent on, on, uh, on. Well, I keep wanting to say Friday, but on Saturday, and then uh, and then again a couple a couple of goals on Sunday on the power play penalty kill allowed two in five opportunities. Your thoughts on special teams? Power play seems to be shaping up a bit. Yeah, you know they're doing a good job. They're they're really starting to create opportunity on the power play and. Hem teams in a little bit on that side. Uh, you know, this weekend the, the penalty kill wasn't very good, um, I thought. So we have to have both those going at the same time yeah. in order to, to beat good hockey teams. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the power play is definitely, I, I don't know what their percentage is over the last 10 games, but it's really good. And um, uh, I'm proud of those guys for continuing that, you know, to, to go after it. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the things, you know, uh, throughout the course of this season, I mean, here we are, 46 games in, you know, we, from the very beginning, we've talked about tasks and about sticking with things and so on. And it seems like the power play, like you said, you know, they're sticking with it and it, it's starting to come around. Weather related changes, obviously, you know, we have two day blizzard last week, creates problems for uh, teams to travel and, and uh, end up playing a Sunday afternoon. I mean, that creates problems for ticket takers and concessions and you know you name it across the board everybody's affected did it how much did it affect you guys as a team i don't know i it's hard to say yeah. it really is i mean it's you know, you gear up all week for a certain routine and it gets changed but again you, you know you're you're playing junior hockey so you have to try to adapt to it uh, i think that's probably a, a better question for the players because yeah. um, they're the ones ultimately having to prepare their bodies and and be ready to play that you know that that shortened schedule 
Um, yeah, tough to put a measuring stick on it for sure. Yeah. But, and, and like you said, you know, we've got a player coming up. Likely we'll ask him about that. You know, what? We're, like I mentioned, we're at game 46, playoff push really starts now. And we've got some very tight divisions or, or uh, very tight matchups and so on throughout the Central Division. Um, you know, usually around midway through the season, I ask you, like, is this team trending the right direction? Is it doing what you'd like it to be doing? Is, are they making the steps when it comes to growth that, that you'd like to see? If you had a microscope or if somebody had a microscope and looked at this team from special teams to goaltending to whatever, are, are, you, are you happy about the way things are moving? I mean, because I'm trying to think overall big picture here because there are so many positives to take away. Yeah, I think it's every other night, mm -hmm. honestly. The way things have been going, we're up and down, up and down, and it's hard to solidify a position in the standings when, when you, your play is like that. And we've obviously been really keying on trying to put two together or three or four together. And uh, this is one of the first years I haven't had a run um, with a hockey team. So, but yeah, I mean, there's some nights you look and, and boy, you know, what a good hockey team these guys are and, and then we are. And then other nights you just, you know, we, we, it's tough to, to understand how we are two different beasts, you know, at times. But, right. you know, we still have time to fix our consistency. We still have time to to, to win some hockey games. So there's still uh, time to take a run. Yeah. Oh, Make for sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, and our guys aren't happy with uh, with their play. I mean, you can just you just feel it. You know, they they want to win bad, and but sometimes wanting to win and, and winning are two huge yeah. differences and there's a lot you need to do you know we're scoring goals now but now we're giving them up you know where we weren't giving a whole lot up but we weren't scoring any yeah you know so yeah it's uh it's a maturity thing guys are gonna have to learn to play both ends of the rink and play well it's funny you say that because uh, after yesterday sunday's game i said to somebody i'm like you know it's really weird at the beginning of the season they were you know low scoring games that the wings were winning and not scoring a whole lot of goals but but again we're allowing many and then it kind of flip-flopped now you're now the goals are starting to come and you're scoring three or three or four you know at a time but by the same token as you just said i started to you know allow some so it is kind of a, a tale of two seasons in a lot of senses, but one would like to think that you can kind of put those together. And and like you said, there's plenty, there's you know still plenty of time left. And of course, the playoffs are a whole different beast, you know. And this team has been tested in a lot of ways over the course of the season. And we talked standings: the Austin Bruins top the division, 65 points, and then the Wings in second with 51, St. Cloud in third with 50, Minot in fourth with 48, North Iowa comes out from the bottom; they are sitting there with uh, 47 points, and then Bismarck 46. It is ridiculously close when it comes to the standings, and uh, it's and there's nobody out of anything. That is for sure. Again, Austin with a 15-point lead, but after that, you're talking you know one point at a time increments. Um, Austin does have uh, 47 games played. North Iowa with 45. Everybody else in the middle with 46. You've got Minot coming into into town this coming weekend. Uh, have, uh, stringing some home games together here. Minot uh, split with Bismarck over the weekend. Overall, you guys uh, you know have played Minot fairly well. Five, two, and one versus uh, the Minotauros here this season. Um, you know we talked about improvement. Talked about having to you know come up with some consistency and things like that. What do you feel like you've got to do? Well, I mean, there's no question they got the best line in the league, or, or I would say our divisions. You know, they, they got hot there on Saturday, and obviously they were the difference between uh, winning and losing that, that game. So, obviously, you got to be good defensively against them because they, they score a lot of goals. They tend to, to, to really be able to, to finish. Yeah. Um, so, we need good goaltending, and, you know, I, uh, I think uh, the way we're creating right now, we're, we are scoring goals, so I think we just have to, we have to be a little tighter to play against. Okay. Well, Saturday night is uh, the Teddy Bear Night. Teddy Bear Toss Night. And again, I'll give you the details, uh, the folks, uh, the details on that in just a little bit. But I've always got to ask you, what's your prediction? Who's who's going to be the one to, to make the, the Teddy Bears fly? Oh, uh, that's hard to say. <laughs> um, I'll go with Tishkevich. Okay. 
pretty good bet. Uh, he's, uh, again, there were all plenty of, as far as chances go and so on, now there were plenty of times that I was like, oh, that was so close, off a post or whatever, uh, with uh, Nikolai there for sure. All right, Coach, again, a breakdown of the weekend, what we're looking forward to coming up this uh, this coming weekend against Minot here at the ODI Center again. And as, uh, as I always say, thanks so much for your time. I know you guys are very busy. Thanks, Jay. All right, folks, second portion of Wayne's Weekly will come up after this. Game time! We're gonna be here all day. Once upon the greatest of all times. Who's this? It's Kyler Murray. Oh, Kyler. Kyler. Bring my phone to 6th Street. We gotta wrap this up. We're looking for Kyler! Just left. Shanae! I'll take those wings though. Wanna catch the game? Yo, Josh, what's up? Yo, Shanae. Josh. To the film room. Yeah! Whoa. Wrong quarterback. Can't even see the screen. Be does. Where's my phone? Wrong quarterback, bro. To the greatest of all friends. To the greatest of all times. Buffalo Wild Wings. Second portion of Wings Weekly continues on, and this time a player is joining me, which isn't probably much of a surprise to most because that's kind of what we do. But this time it is Owen Benoit of St. Albans, Vermont. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to have you. Uh, I got to ask right away, coming from Vermont, you know, you, you have a cup of coffee in Sioux Falls, and then you're up in Aberdeen, and you're going, what, what did you know about the Plains and the Dakotas and stuff coming from Vermont? What, did you have any? clue what you were getting into uh no i had absolutely no idea but i've learned pretty quickly what it's all about so yeah definitely a change of scenery i just you know as a guy that uh, when i was younger i moved around a little bit you know spent a little time in phoenix and minneapolis and places but it just always amazes me how uh, i know how you guys at such a young age you know are, are traveling around and experiencing so much and seeing different parts of the country like that and it always just you know it takes a lot of bravery to be honest and not everybody is capable of, of uh, leaving the nest so to speak or leaving home and uh, going out on their own so uh, I was like I said I always got to ask if you know what, what that first experience is like and the impressions and so on um, and then, you know, another thing I always ask, because everybody's got a different answer. And this year, you know, I've talked to different players about how they got started and so on. A lot of them have been started or, or starting skating at a very young age. I think one, the earliest we heard this year so far was 11 months. And I'm like, wow, that is, you know, did you start skating at a really young age like that too? Uh, yeah, my, my dad, I think, got me into it when I was around two, two years old. So started skating then and then, yeah, just stuck with it. So how did so where does the inspiration come from was you know just starting skating as a recreational thing or was it like okay now I'm, I, I mean I want to play this game was there somebody in your family or somebody like that maybe who uh, you know had some experience with that before oh uh, yeah I would say my dad and my uncles um, they all played and okay. played at pretty high levels so um, yeah they definitely kind of got me got me hooked on it so excellent I, I find it's you know again always a different answer from everybody and it's interesting because some people have family members that uh, you know that that kind of get them going and it's sort of almost in their blood in a way because like because it is a family event or family affair and then there's others that are like nah, I had a friend down the street and you know <laughs> parents knew absolutely nothing about what they were getting into uh, but they learned quickly how about defense? Uh, it feels like the last, th I think, three weeks now I've had a defenseman on. I always got to ask, you know, were, at what point did you start playing you know, becoming a blue liner and, and why? Uh, yeah, it's kind of the same answer. My family's all defensemen, so that's what I started out with and then just kind of grew with it and um, started to like it more and more. So, Well, and you're, uh, in a sense, a little bit different. Like, I, you know, we talked with Comfort last week and, and you know, he, a little bit more of a stay-at-home defender. But, you know, as I watch these games over the last few weeks uh, you're a guy that is then not afraid to you know to go down the wall or you know take a, take shots and so on and of course coming up with a big goal uh, on Sunday uh, what where do you get your style that that um, uh, fashion of play I guess where do you get where does that come from uh, I don't really know I mean I just kind of go out there and try and be creative and um, make plays and stuff and use my my skating to help out the team in any way that I can so 
definitely joining the rush and trying to create offense is a big part. I, it's interesting because, like you said, joining the rush. Well, oftentimes, you know, I've, again, over the, just the last few games, even I swear there's you know there's times where I'm watching you skate and somebody coming at you, and I'm like, he does not move like a defenseman. You've got <laughs> some pretty nifty feet and some uh, you know like you know we were just talking about you know Tishkovich or some guys like that who um, you know can move around guys and split defenders and so on. And, and I've noticed that you do that quite well yourself. So, do, does playing defense? help you on the rush do you see things a little differently do you think oh well, yeah i mean you being back on on the blue line and stuff you can you can see the whole ice um which i've always liked um so yeah i mean it just makes it easier to read plays and react and uh join the rush and just have have a good vision for for the whole ice sheet so once again, I'm uh, surprised at the at answers from people because that um, you know is is one that comes up often is being able to see in front of them and, you know the, and see the ice in the, in that sense. I've heard that from a handful of defensemen, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, well, when you're not at the rink, what do you like to do? Have any uh, hobbies or anything like that that you? Oh man, uh, not much. Recently, I've been uh, watching the new Outer Banks season, but besides that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of just like to like to relax and spend time with with whoever I want to spend time with. So, well, a lot of the boys anymore are into into chess, and a lot of them playing cards and stuff like that. Is that something that you're you're kind of uh, you throw your hat into that ring too? Yeah, yeah, I'll play poker here and there, but I don't feel very good taking all the boys' money. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> so generous of you. Yeah, I uh, love that. Okay, um, music wise, what what? <laughs> Well, how would you describe your tastes? I want is, I guess, what I want to ask because it's kind of hard. There's so many, so many guys are so eclectic. They'll listen to a little bit of anything. If you have a preference, what is uh, is your go-to? Yeah, um, I would probably say country music. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's on every now and then in the locker room, and those days I'm probably probably a little bit more happy. So, yeah, interesting. Um, well, let's see. Well, and these days, I don't know. I feel like uh, anymore there's there's a lot of country kind of sounds a little bit like pop and a little bit yeah. like rock. You know, yeah. It's not quite as, as defined as it once was. So I guess I could see where that would be the case. How about uh, on a game day? Do you have any any um, superstitions, but any kind of a, a schedule or, or a, you know, a way of going about things that you need to do that you, you know, for, uh, for game day preparation? Uh, not much, no. I just kind of wake up uh, whenever we need to be at the rink or whatever. And then, um, yeah, I'll take a pregame nap or around, I don't know, a little bit afternoon after my meal. So sure. yeah, nothing too crazy though. Who in the locker room would you say has the best style or drip? Who's, who, cause there's some guys that I'm looking at, I'm like, man, the shoes, the whatever, like, there's some uh, guys that really take pride in the way they dress. Yeah, I would have to go with uh, Zach Rhyme probably. Yeah. yeah, he can rock a turtleneck, so. Yeah, Backle's always rocking the turtleneck yeah, too. Yeah, Backle does too. And who'd have thought? I, turtlenecks, how did they come back? I, I, that I don't blows know. me away. I don't but, know. but they do, they make you look good. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. I've got a couple of goofy questions here for you before we kind of move along to you know other parts of the hockey aspects. But if, if, you, were had, if you had the ability to see into the future, would you rather be able to see 10 minutes into the future and see everything cl clearly and know exactly how things were going to go? Or would you rather be able to see 150 years into the future, we're way ahead, but things, you know, the, the, the details are a little sketchy? Hmm. So you have a basic idea of it with the 150 years, but everything is crystal clear if it's just 10 minutes. I'd go with the 10 minutes. Yeah. Is it because of the hockey aspect? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. you know, from that point, from that standpoint, I, it would definitely be advantageous to have the 10 minutes. But yeah, yeah otherwise, 150 years, you know, that's, yeah, uh, kind of a crazy one. How about um, if you had the ability to have telekinesis or the uh, ability to move things with your mind or the ability to read? Read minds. Hmm. Uh, probably the ability to read minds. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Same situation. Is it because of yeah. how it would work? Some lot, but yeah. if you could move things with your mind, that would be pretty pretty yeah. uh, advantageous for the hockey aspect too. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. You know, I, I, as I was telling coach, you know, just kind of wrapping up the weekends and getting to know you a little bit. Uh, I, I won't keep you a whole lot longer here, but I was mentioning, you know, that it's uh, the teddy bear toss night uh, coming up this this Saturday. You know, throughout hockey, it's a it's a pretty big deal. You know, and there's a, a lot of teams. 
to, to, to participate in, in the Yildush, well, for ours, the Yildush Shrine Teddy Bear Toss Night. And a lot of the players get pretty excited about it and, and uh, want to be the one who's going to be the first to celebrate when the, you know, when the teddy bears start flying. Who do you think it's going to be? Hmm. And oh, you can man. vote for yourself. You can absolutely say No, I, I don't know. Um, I'll go with, with Gullickson. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. I've, I'm, I've, Gravy's got a hot hand lately. Oh, Gravy does too. That's, I, I yeah. think I'm going to go with Gravy. So. Yeah, that's a good pick. Uh, we've got Minot coming up. Like like I said, the teddy bear toss. And I was just talking to Coach a little bit about, uh, you know, the fact that you guys uh, have played them well uh, over the course of the season. But they've been some really exciting close games, 5-2-1 and one overall. Um, as, as a unit, as a team, you know, Coach and I were just talking a little bit about, um, you know, maybe some consistency that's off. And all those you know some of these things that as the season has gone along and of course you're a guy that you know got here well what just before the christmas break really right uh, you know what what do you see when you look around the locker room that you guys need to do as a team as a culture as a as a group uh yeah i mean i think the biggest thing is just the consistency part and um just holding each other accountable mm -hmm. um which i think we do a good job but i mean there's always room for improvement and stuff and um, just constructive criticism and um, all those kinds of things is stuff we can do to get better so not always the easiest thing constructive criticism sometimes can you know some people take that the wrong way right. you know it can be it can be kind of tricky for sure um, as far as uh, as Minot goes, as I mentioned, you you have seen this team before, and like Coach said, they've got a, a, a really strong a strong line, and they have the as a whole as a group, they have the ability to score. They've got good goaltending, so it's going to take uh, a, every aspect of it, every component of the Wings' best game to you know come away with some wins against Minot here coming up this weekend. You know, I was talking with Coach a little uh, about the the schedule change, and he mentioned that it might be a better question you know for a player. So I want to ask you, did did having to have Friday off and then play an afternoon game because I get thinking of the showcase, you know, and Blaine, you might have a noon game or whatever one day and then the next you play at six and then it's, you know, just kind of something that you just have to get used to and both teams have the same kind of uh, um, schedule, at least when it comes to, to game times. However, when it's, you're on the road, it's a little different because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have you know, the, the same routine and stuff. Did it affect you guys as players, do you think? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, your body's kind of in a cycle and you try and stay in that. But um, for me, at least it wasn't too big of a deal you yeah. just kind of kind of dealt with it so I don't know to me it just it was weird when I walked in and the sun was so bright and I you know I looked at uh, yeah. you know looked at the door guy and I was like I was like Leroy this this just feels weird like why are we here yeah <laughs> it just yeah. seemed like an odd but like coach said everybody's got to deal with it and everybody you know you you just got to kind of power through that and and uh, come up uh, with the best effort that you can. All right, well, Owen, I appreciate you, uh, as, as always, with all of you guys, you know, all you players that take some time, you know, to, to set aside some time to, you know, let the, let the folks out there know a little about you, where you come from, where you're, you know, your hockey start, all of those things. So we, I really appreciate you taking some time to join us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Well, the Wings are back at the OD this weekend, as I mentioned, March 3rd and 4th. Friday, doors open at 5.30 and the puck drops at 7.15. Educator Appreciation Night. $5 tickets at the door to all educators. We welcome Dakota Broadcasting as the game's corporate sponsor inside the Automax party deck. Saturday, once again, doors open at 5.30 and the puck hits the ice at 7.15. Again, it is the teddy bear toss night. Make sure you bring your teddy bears to toss out onto the ice once the first Wings goal is scored. We also have Danger Von Dempsey skate with the Wings after the game. We do usually ask that you maybe uh, have a plastic bag or something that the teddy bears are in so they don't get dirty or wet when they go out onto the ice. We also welcome the Yildiz Shriners as the game's corporate sponsor inside the Automax party deck. As always, tickets are available online at tickets.aberdeenwings.com or at the door on game nights. $10 general admission tickets are also available at NEC Express location location in Aberdeen with additional purchase. Just a reminder that all SDAHA players and coaches can receive $5 general admission tickets at the door all season long. Don't forget, you can listen to Wings Weekly via our podcast. Find the audio for this season's episodes on Spotify, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. And for all the latest news and information on the Wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok. Once again, Owen Benoit, thank you so much for joining us. Really, again, a great, great opportunity to, for everyone to kind of get to know you. Yeah, thanks again. All right, folks, that will wrap up this week's Wings Weekly.